welcome to another edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is Julia Smith and I will be sharing with you the reasons behind the change in outlook of the Triple B ratings on the Bahamas to Credit Watch negative. On June 29, 2015, Bahamar Limited, the developer of the Bahamar Resort development, filed for Chapter 11 reorganization bankruptcy after repeated delays in the opening of the $3.5 billion resort in the Bahamas which was originally scheduled to open at the end of 2014. The Credit Watch placement reflects our view that the bankruptcy filing could result in a prolonged delay in the opening of the Bahama Resort, which is the biggest in the Bahamas history. We believe that a delay could weaken the image of the Bahamas tourism brand and lead to lower economic growth in the country. The reorganization filing comes after disputes between the resort's developer, Bahama Limited, its main lender, the Export-Import Bank of China, and the contractor, China Construction America. In our opinion, if the parties do not come to an agreement in the next several weeks, there are risks that not only would Bahamar be unable to open in the near future, but that if and when it does open, it may not receive the amount of visitors that were originally expected, thus tarnishing the reputation of the Bahamas tourism industry which represents more than 50% of the Bahamas' GDP. We also believe that the developer will be unable to continue employing the more than 2,000 workers that it had already hired, let alone hire the additional 3,000 workers that it planned on hiring once the resort opened if the dispute remains unresolved over the next couple of weeks. We think that this may exacerbate the country's already high unemployment rate, which is about 15.7% in November 2014. This is in a country with a population of only about 370,000. The reorganization filing comes amid growing external pressures in the country, with its current account deficit growing to 22% of GDP in 2014, which is the highest level reached in over a decade. Yet some of this growth reflects the large imports required for the Bahamar project. At the same time, net foreign direct investment has con continued to decline and only financed about 14% of the country's current account deficit in 2014, compared to over 50% in 2011. The potential further delay in the opening of the Bahamar Resort may also have negative implications on the Bahamas' external accounts, possibly limiting the boost that the tour tourism offering was expected to contribute to the country's exports. That said, the rating on the, Baham on the Bahamas continues to reflect the sovereign's track record of generally prudent policies throughout different governments, which has underpinned a high level of per capita GDP and standards of living. After peaking in the fiscal year ended in June 2013 at 6.6% .6 of GDP, the government deficit has since declined, with preliminary estimates showing a deficit of about 2.2% of GDP in the fiscal year ended in June 2015. However, net general government debt has continued to rise, reaching almost 53% of GDP in 2014. The Bahamas government deficit has benefited from the new value-added tax, the VAT, introduced in, in January 2015. Preliminary estimates show that from January to June, the government collected around $150 million in new net revenues from the VAT, or about 1.7% of the country's GDP. This puts the country on track to meet its goal to collect new net revenues of around 300 million or 3% of GDP in the first full year that the VAT has been implemented. So this VAT reform represents an important political and economic effort and demonst demonstrates uh, progress on the government's fiscal consolidation efforts. We aim to resolve the credit watch listing on the Bahamas in the next 90 days. We could affirm our ratings on the country if Bahamar is able to resume construction and open soon, thereby limiting the impact on the country's economy. Under this scenario, we believe that the reorganization filing would only impose minimal damage to the country's labor market, its long-term growth prospects and external accounts, and the reputation of its tourism industry. This along with continued evidence that the government's fiscal reform measures are on track, particularly in achieving the government's target of collecting 3% of GDP in VAT revenues annually, would lead us to affirm the ratings. 
On the other hand, we can lower our ratings on the Bahamas by one or more notches if we think there will be a prolonged delay in opening the resort or if the project fails. In this scenario, damage to the Bahamas' financial profile, including a possible erosion of its external liquidity, could weaken it, the Bahamas' creditworthiness. Disappointment on the fiscal side, including failure in meeting the government's VAT target or increased pressure on the interna international reserves could also lead us to lower the rating by one or more notches. Thank you for accessing Credit Matters TV.